Maybe one will be able to have one virus on Florida's tiny lobster population. And uh, Mark was talking to me about the whiz bang, uh, oceanographic models and all of that. We're trying to you know, model how the whole planet works. This is the exact opposite approach. This is how simple a model can you make but still track things like landings, effort, trips, traps, all that kind of stuff. So can we make a very simple model, not a very complex one, and still get information? And so this is sort of trying to think the, the other side of modeling. Plus the fact we told we keep it simple, so I'm going to try to keep it very simple. So this is just basically a very simple input-output model. And all I'm really going to be looking at is, we'll get into it in a minute, but basically you're going to have stuff coming in, you have stuff coming out, and one of the coming out is going to be the virus, and how does that work? So this thing you've seen earlier, well not this one, but you've seen the discussion of it, and you can see basically this is the surface waters, but you can see how you get your retention areas, the Gulf of Atapano and all of that, and your areas over here. And for the best part, the, it's not a Florida fishery is what it comes out to be. And this is just putting in context, this is the lobster landings from FAO, and what it shows, the white boxes, that's the U.S. It used to be a Cuban fishery, but now it's a Bahamian fishery. And with Cuba, we're about four to that. Nicaragua is coming on, and the discussions about if you ever start fishing Nicaragua, start fishing the adults down there, start fishing that spotting stock. Well, guess what? They do fish that, and <laughs> it could get interesting. This is, oops, I did two of them, didn't I? Okay. This is commercial landings. And of course, since I picked yellow or green, you can't see it, but the, this is the reported landings starting in the 85, 86 um, fishing year. And broken out by traps, divers, others. And I made a 1985 to 1999 average, i.e. before the virus, and then a 2000 to 2012 average. And that difference up there comes out to be about 27, something like that, 27 percent. And that's not too exciting. I mean, yes, we have drops like that. But if I look at the recreational, and I do the exact same thing, except there I can only do it from 92, I get the same percent change. So if the same percent change is on the recreational side as on the commercial side, it might be real, as opposed to just some changes. Because we have lots of changes going on, but it actually comes out, in my mind, okay, there's 28% on this one. And so there, what you've got here is something is different in this last decade or so than before. Okay, so, and this was just looking at effort. Now, one of the things that makes it interesting is, of course, during the same period, effort has decreased. So we have confounding influences. That's one of the problems with modeling is you'd like, life would be simple if there was one cause for anything. But there's never one cause. There's lots of things interacting. Synergism is real. And what this whole process is trying to do is to tease the different layers out. But effort has gone down. In fact, it's gone down more than the landings. And effort has gone down on the recreational <coughs> side. So in both cases, effort's down. Landings are down. So what? So it's just that. We don't have to worry about it. It's just all effort. If people fish for the catch more. <coughs> well, not really. So that's really what my whole question is. Is even though I got these confounding influences out there, is there a way of sort of unpeeling the onion and doing it? Can I actually identify any kind of a viral influence from changes in effort, from changes in regulations, putting in things, you know, the usual stuff. Okay, so this is just a simple model. This type of model has been used in the, oh, you've been around, okay. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, 
But this type of model has been used in the Caribbean for lobsters by us, the United States. It's been used in Mexico. It's been used in Cuba. And it's been used in the Bahamas. And so it's a very common type of model. It's just input and output. I mean, this is really nothing more exciting than your wallet. You get money in, there's some money in your wallet, you spend money. That's going out. Question is, what's in your wallet? And it, since it's not constant, it's always changing, you'd really like it to, in math, <laughs> you'd like to have a positive first derivative, i.e., you'd like to not be broke. <laughs> that's all it is. And that's all we're trying to do. So now what it's trying to do is, the point is, we have landings for all these years. We have them by year. So it's going to try to match all of those. We have these various indices, including the ones that are down here that it's not showing. And uh, I knew that when we put these on apples, it was going to get me. Uh, <laughs> it did. Uh, that, so what, what happens is we are going to try to predict all of these catches, all of these indices and stuff. And all we really got is we got some effort. That's what's going to drive this. And so I'm going to use from 85 to 2012. I broke the year up into four pieces. <coughs> um, July to October, i.e. basically the beginning of the season, where there's a lot of activity in the course with how stone crabs comes on in October, kind of changes things. And then November, January, and then in February, March, a little bit of research. And, and of course, it's closed in April or June. So just breaking that up, it allows me to then actually monitor the fishing inside of the year as well as between years. And it also lets it, you're not saying that they're fishing all year long, so you're not trying to handle fishing removals during the close season. We're not going to lie, we're closing the close. It's broken up into recreational. It's into trappers, divers, others, attractants for shorts, and attractants for legal size. So those are the five, six, six categories we're trying to track. And then the, again, the various indices. So we're trying to take that and out of that, come on. So all we're trying to do is we have going to throw in an initial population size. And I have no idea what that is. So I'm going to put in a little number. I'm going to put in a medium-sized number. I'm going to put in a big number. Put in a big, very, very big number. And I'll see what I get. It's going to see what comes into the fishery two times. This catchability, that just lets me relate numbers of animals to catches. And I put in a starting viral proportion. And I started anything from 3% to 50% at different times, different runs, just because I, I don't know. I don't know what to start. And it's going to adjust all of it. So what it does, that's just how you start it. And then you can kind of think about, you've got <coughs> a bunch of things called parameters. They're just these things. You put in these initial values, and then all of them get to change until you get what fits the catches best, the indices best, and all that. So you just think of it like at a board, you're shaking this thing. It's just keep calculating, calculating, calculating until it finds the low value, the best fit. And that's all it's doing. You know, we, like I say, we do it with different starting values and different rates of, of the uh, prevalence. And what happens? Well, this is what the whole thing looks like pictorially. Now, if you remember, Mark had a really cool one. He had all neat little boxes. Mine's very simple. It just says recruitment comes from two sources. You have external, which is from Mark's talk this morning, the bulk of it, and there's probably some local. That doesn't really make a whole lot of difference at this point. But that gets you to settlement. <coughs> settlement, once they've settled, they either survive, they can die later on as juveniles, or they can die from natural causes, you know, fish eat them, all the other things that they're going to die from. And they're talking about, you know, suitable habitat, things like that. That's this arrow. All those deaths do everything else other than the virus is that arrow. <coughs> Then you get up here to where they are now big enough to start fishing, and you know, the guy's range is bigger. And again, they're either going to die of fishing, or they're going to die of natural causes, or they're going to still be alive. So really, it's nothing more than coming in and going out. It's a very, very simple input-output model. 
Now, it's got a few things. When you look at the actual details, it's got 150 different things that get buried. And that's just because you got 112 recruitment values. So what you're looking at here is you got think of 150 little boxes, and they're trying to predict 507 data points. That's all they're doing. Nothing more. You just try to figure out what these little guys are doing. Okay, did it work? Well, you can't really see the green, but the green is the predicted values. And these, the blue dots are the observed landings for the different times of the year. There's four of them per year. And you'll notice that every one of the green is exactly matching the, uh, the blue dots. So it gives the commercial traps, other gears, divers, and recreational divers. Now this, remember there's only one season as far as recreational diving. It's only the first part. So that's why there's a three down here. But the point is, you're fitting all of your catches. So even though we're just shaking this thing back and forth to see how it fits, it fits all of those. It fits the shorts. And on the various tuning indices, it doesn't fit them very well on the legal size diver transects or the uh, the time show. <coughs> that one doesn't fit. Cool. Well, I'll get there. <laughs> now we've done it all. Let's see what happens. The undo button. Undo, undo. Ah. Oh, now I've done it. Now he's done it. I'm going to put the slash for the shorts. Oh, it'll be short. It'll be short. Honestly. Oh, okay. This is a danger. Nice. Speed little button you hit on that. There you go. Perchance. Is it this one? I was. What did I do with that? It's this, if you hit that, is that one right? If you hit it, do it again, just hit it the second time. So. Awesome. The death button. The death button. Okay. But as you'll notice up here, the observer data, like I say, the observer data fits quite nicely. The uh, this game up there, it fit. Now I'm going to go, now, now we'll go to the next one. That's where the challenge is. The next one. And this one, for some reason, it absolutely love that one. It fit all the crazy points in that crazy thing. And that's pre-recruits. This is all the pre-recruit pre indices. And the pre-recruits here are animals that are expected to enter the fishery sometime during the fishing year. So sometime during that year, they're expected <coughs> to get up to the least legal size. So they're not starting three inches. They're actually starting smaller because of molting and all of that. So taking a, but you know, so the pre-recruits fit very nicely. And it's the pre-recruits who are the juveniles who are actually what the virus is involved with. And of course, this is what we get in terms of recruitment and all that. We do see a drop off in recruitment in recent years. But there's lots of variability, primarily because I don't have an index anymore coming beyond. We had an index out in here that worked rather nicely. I don't have a good index in there that I used to have, which I would like to have. And this is what fishing mortalities look like. Fishing mortality, surprise, surprise. Most of the mortality of fishing comes from the trap fishery. And also the um, using attractants, which again, not too surprising there. The main thing about this is when I put in the natural stuff, you'll see this little thing right here, these blues. That blue out there is actually not quite close to the same size as the trap fishery. And that blue is the viral deaths. So the deaths in here, and in this particular model, again, I said we started with anything from 3% to 50%. It's what was going to be the proportion of animals that are dying due to the virus affecting just what's coming in, just the fear of the and the most, this model like 23%. So it was kind of nice when they put up a statement 24% of what they got and they're running through the various mortality estimates. Now it could be a total fluke at this point. That's very possible. But it is reassuring to see that we're at least we're in the same ballpark. I wasn't getting 1% and I wasn't getting 98%. <laughs> But I was getting something in the same ballpark. 
Now, one thing that's very weird about this is because this was discovered in the 1999, was the fact that it's nitrate. There's, there's, it probably is some kind of a ramp up from before, but we have no information on that. But we also don't have any information on what would be the annual prevalence rate, because then we could actually fit an, what the annual prevalence rate was, not just an overall blanket. Right now, this is just an overall blanket that says, okay, on average, in order to fit landings and everything else, the best number to account for that was 23% of recruitment. So after they quote, once they did what would have been coming into the fishery, 23% of them get taken off before they actually get into the fishery, what this model says. So it's like I said, it's a very simple model. It's a very easy model, and it seems to give values right now which are at least, we're in the ballpark. And so that's what, I, that's what I'm trying to get to, to be in the ballpark at this point, because then what we can do is a lot of what um, Tom was mentioning was that we can look at alternatives and see is there a way to find it. That's just the model, where we find the information on the virus, because then we can dial that information into it and then use it for um, alternative, evaluating alternative scenarios. So in essence, right now, for this is just a preliminary model. It's as simple as I can make it, and that uh, we're getting at least values that are consistent with what they're getting in other ways, which is for me, that's very reassuring to have something which is consistent. And, come on you, there we go. What I would like to do is, of course, um, that's a <laughs> And like I said, is, like I said, we'd like to do is we'd like to update the information and someday I'd like to get a juvenile index as we were talking about before. I'd love to have a juvenile index of lobsters so you can span this. And earlier on they were talking about the value of long-term monitoring. And it's just incredibly valuable when you're trying to, want to build models because it gives you the context of if things go up or things go down, it provides guidance because models, unfortunately, will give you answers. But you have to give them guidance to make sure that what you have has some semblance of reality. And uh, because left to their own, they will give you an answer. And so like I say, I would love to have a dual index there. And then of course, I, also the prevalence index, when they were talking about the PCR method, I was thinking hot dog, I can look at the PCR method, <coughs> I can look at the visual, put the two together, calibrate it, and we have an index. And then they notice, on the 2008, there were no visuals detected. <laughs> it's very hard to calibrate when there's zero being detected. And in 2010, there was one. And so that idea didn't work. But, <laughs> but the point is that uh, I think we're at least in the right, going on the right track. And that's it, guys. That is, I told us, but we check on the time. Sorry, I didn't put any weird equations in, but I, don't know why it's, I, I could, could do this all with cool calculus, but it's just easier to keep it simple. Well, most uh, of us that have known you have seen your weird equations. <laughs> <laughs> They're not that weird. Kind of normal. Yeah, yeah. So we got time for some Wait. questions? Yeah, basically you're saying that the, the decrease in landings in the last 10, 12 years are a what result it's, of the what it says is the that, that that's consistent. Yes. It's consistent. What it's saying is that, that a drop in the supply of the fruits into the fishery of around 20 yeah. to 20 percent of round numbers, that's consistent with what you've seen in the pond. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Yes. So the, the way you constructed the model mm -hmm. was the virus 
always the influence of the virus always considered in the model, or did you allow the virus to come in at that time? Point? It only comes in at that time. Okay. It comes in in 1999. And that's and because the lack of data prior to that? Well, or? because they, there's no information whatsoever okay. prior to that. Yeah, we could we could have a lovely discussion on how you'd like to ramp it up, and I can dial in any pattern you want. Because right. remember, right. that's the easy stuff. Right. The hard stuff is what are is, what's the information supporting the pattern? Because the way it came out was folks who've been looking at juveniles for 30 years in the Keys in 1999 said, "My God, look at the little white spot." Mm -hmm. Why is, it, why is the blood white? Why is it milky? But even looking at these things, I mean, I, I first met Mark back in the early 80s when Herring kind and he used to come down and sample down here. And so it's not like, you know, well, we've noticed some of those, we've ignored them. We don't, no, it's kind of like, what the heck is this thing? So it, it could be 950, could, we just don't know what that map right. right. But putting it in the trigger. Yes. But Paul, I just I mean, as one of the guys who's working on this disease stuff too, mm -hmm. I disagree a little bit with you know um, some of the the uh, the conclusion that the virus. I mean, this I disagree a little bit, and I know that mm -hmm. maybe Don or John may have a different opinion on this, but I mean, we have in those old days we did see this from time to time. Um, we weren't catching; we didn't know how many. And frankly, like you said, now and then, even when we do our surveys, sometimes years we come up with one or two. So it's not like I don't think it's really the prevalence has really changed, and just anecdotally, when you look at the last 15 years, the prevalence has been pretty steady. And it could be, it is true, that the downturn in the fishery coincides with a very serendipitous situation in which we decided to start working on this virus. But I, I don't think it's true. There's no evidence to suggest that the virus all of a sudden emerged. It, in, night, in, in that time. And because of that, like you're saying, you start out your talk saying there's multiplicative effects. Mm -hmm. There's been all kinds of changes in fisheries throughout the Caribbean. There's been other kinds of things. So I think it's a nice, convenient thing to do. And believe me, I'm one of the ones who's benefited from, you know, <laughs> we've been able to get money to do work search on the virus. <laughs> but I'm not convinced scientifically that the data are good enough to say that the fishery is taking a downturn because of the virus. I don't think the evidence is strong enough. Well, I can say all I was saying. <laughs> As I said, the, the whole thing was what is consistent when you overlap the patterns of effort, patterns of the fishery, patterns of basically the path does, and then patterns like the coralist settlement and the when I superimpose all those things together, what comes out to be a simple solution? And the simple solution came out the best information. So you could have chosen zero. Remember when you're going across this thing. Because all I'm doing is giving you a starting value. You can go any way it wants. And the solution that was the most robust across all the different starting values was always 23. So all the, that's where the consistency is. Now, as far as prior to that, it would be very nice to have information on that, but as you're saying, the visual detection has such low resolution yeah. that you just don't have it. Right. Yeah. And so one could ramp it up. Now one could make a sensitivity case of just let it be complete across. Have be have the same have eight percent across all years and see how that would shake out. Or take this model and look at populations with and without the virus. Yeah. That might be another interesting place, yeah. way to evaluate to see whether, whether how much the virus in other locales, if we had the similar kinds of data, would predict this. It might be just another approach, perhaps. Mm -hmm. We can't get the historical data, but we well, might be able to look at it. You will note that, well, remember, in the late <clears throat> 80s, is when Cuba drops off. They blamed that, of course, on Hurricane Mitch. Uh, if you look across that rise, you do peak out in the late 90s is when it peaks out for the Caribbean in total. And then you start getting a decrease. You get decreases in most of the fisheries, including the Bahamas and the Nicaragua. Right. Even the Nicaragua was increasing, it actually says decreasing. Right. So it is kind of in that time period a widespread phenomenon. 
That's right. And, and that's why I agree it could be. I mean, I, I think that an equally good explanation is changes in spawning stock biomass in the Caribbean wide kind of area that we've reached a point where you know, the spawners are, you know, we've reduced them down to a certain point that we're at a new equilibrium. I think that's an equally viable explanation. Um, then we would for expect the to see the, you expect to see a drop off in the settlement. If the settlement index, and I've, I've placed collectors all over the Caribbean, mm -hmm. and I can tell you there's a hell of a lot of variants. I'm not mm -hmm. convinced well, that, the, that, the, that our settlement index Tom, really works Tom, everywhere either. You know, Tom, Tom and I have had this discussion. Yeah. Tom's told me many times about the fact, you know, you get one or two, and it, maybe bigger, maybe not. Yeah. And how long is it? How long do they stay on it before sure. moving off? So yeah. when you collect it, <coughs> How long have they been there when you pronounce yeah. them all? I don't disagree on this. I just, in a public forum, I, other, I when there's a you know, fisherman here, I also just want to say, I think there is some disagreement. Mm -hmm. I don't. I would hate to see everybody wander, walk away from this yeah. and say, the virus has caused, has caused a downturn mm -hmm. in the last 10 years. Yeah. I'm simply saying, we it's still don't know. That's yeah. it, it's I, a possible I, explanation. I, I, see, yeah. I agree completely. All yeah. I was saying is, is, I'm looking for consistency among things. and. I found it a complete, to be honest with you, a complete fluke that we got the same values. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, yeah, that's and that and that's just the same thought. difference. Yeah. I was hoping to get something in the same ballpark. So I was hoping that you know, with you guys were getting something like with the PCRs of 28 and 30 and 39, I was hoping to get something you know, more than 10 or 15. <laughs> but to have the two come out, that was just kind of a, it was interesting. Right. Yeah, I'd like to. So when Mark's in there saying uh, we don't know what it is, we agree. <laughs> We're having a discussion yeah. about different okay. things. But if it was the virus, there's not much we could do in any way. So that's not really helpful in it. So we're sitting here with the situation where landings are down 30%. What can we do? Mm -hmm. We have fewer lobsters making it to legal size. Are there things we can do to improve the price, the landings of what we have left? So that's really probably the action mm -hmm. step of where working with the fishermen and regulations mm -hmm. would come into place. We've got a situation, what can we do now? Hold on, we'll have a good Could the, um, could the landings be less, I, I'm not sure, I, I saw on one of your diagrams, the landings falling off at a point, and then that about when the trap certificate program came in and you no. reduced effort? No, the trap, trap certificate program came in in 1993. Yeah, I'm supposed to go to 92, but 93 was actually up in the Right. And but it, there was a drop in effort. But the, yeah, effort's been dropping for a well, Right. Well, it dropped greatly up until 99. And then no, after it's that, still dropping. It, and then it, well, no, but I mean the largest uh, mm -hmm. reduction of gear, let's say, was up to 99 or 2000 when they were still taking 10% a year from everybody. Oh, yeah. That was okay. That was I'm sorry, that, uh, you're, you're talking about the act. Okay, you're talking about the reduction in trap. I'm my brain is, is thinking reduction of individuals, right? No, and, I'm saying. Uh, and so that's continuing. Yeah, the trap reduction it continued until I had to say 1999, and then from then on it was pretty much in a hiatus, and then there were some sporadic adjustments, yeah, right? Small after that, but so that. And so it's been sitting pretty much there, but you're still getting the same, de you're still decreasing in the numbers of trips being made by individuals at this time. That, that is continuing going down. So it didn't go down in 99 and then go flat. Right. In fact, right. that was. Yeah, so the bulk of the <coughs> trap production of those three or four, 10 percent we actually gave some back uh, occurred from 92 to 96. The peak okay. landings in the fishery were actually 97 to 99 when there was no trap reduction. So actually landings increased after the trap reduction. And then come 2000, uh, not, uh, not acknowledging why, because we don't know, but landings dropped that 30%. Right. Okay. One Thanks. more quick, or go ahead, John, or I don't know who was up first. The landings change here in Florida has not was not a gradual shift from one paradigm to another. It was a sharp knife edge change. And that is part of the, the challenge of, of trying to come up with why. But it was definitely like, it was two different <coughs> regimes, landings were here, 
and now they're here. Mm -hmm. 